Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 4th November 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs using Q technical charts. We look at broad market internal analysis using charts and sector industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the posts from our traders community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel. I'll try to answer them as I go along. This was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. Before I begin with the live system, like I did in the last week, let me ask, what do you think of the current market? It's clearly bullish. Market is at all time high. Is there any sign of bearishness? The answer is actually no. There is not any indication that the market will drop. Sometimes in the weekly market roundups, I observed that the force of going up is not complete in some way, like the breadth of the market is not there. Only few industries or sectors are going up. That may continue one week, go away next week. But when I look at bottom up approach, that is try to look for stocks using sonar to look for short opportunities. I don't find any good short opportunities. The stocks that were at the top, 52 week high or pendulum high, they are remaining there, maybe gradually going up. If some of their earnings were good, they shoot up. Some of them were very large cap stocks like Amazon and Apple that helped move the market up. But overall, I don't see any bearish sign. At the same time, it is becoming difficult to find an optimal value stock, both in terms of fundamental or in terms of technical to buy. For fundamentals, we like to buy a stock at optimal value. We don't see many of them, not in the stocks that are going up. The ones that are lagging for many months, retail stocks and many other industries, uh, telecom stocks, for example, they may be optimally valued, but technically there is no signal for buying. And the stocks that are at the top, like Amazon, Facebook, Apple, they are at very top, but is not giving any low risk entry opportunity. Let's start with US oil. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. This is our standard at a glance template that we use to decide if there is a low risk trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart. In last week's roundup, we mentioned that one could take a go with flow long trade on one of these two cyan candles in the daily chart. 
probably more confidently on the second cyan candle that gave us large profit within one trading day. We mentioned in last roundup that as the daily as well as the weekly candle of last week were very bullish, there was no reason to exit full position. Partial position could be held. This week, US oil went up further. So we will still be holding the remaining position. In the weekly chart, there is a memory resistance coming up. So one may keep an eye on that. And if US oil starts to reverse from there, then protect profit on the remaining position using a trailing stop. Where is the current trailing stop? We can change the template to hop off template. When we change the template to hop off template in the daily chart, we can see that, that our current stop loss will be at this level, whereas our long entry was taken at this point. So even if we get stopped out at this Q protection level, we'll have significant profit on the remaining position. So it's a no risk trade from now onward. But as it is bullish, we are not going to exit it right now. We'll hold on to it until we get stopped out or until there is a valid Q short trade setup, which is not there right now. At the right edge, US oil is overbought, as we can see from the stretch dots on top of the candle. So if we didn't enter at this point, then we will not be entering any new long trade right now. We are now looking at gold using at a glance template. Last week, gold was going up from the wide direction line as well as from memory support line. Looking at that, I had commented that it seems that it will go up and at least hit the memory resistance line before dropping if it drops. That actually happened. That was a hypothesis. I cannot predict the future, but that hypothesis came true. And the basis of the hypothesis came from the bull release signal from the wide direction line and from the memory support line all coming together. It precisely hit the memory resistance line and dropped from there. So if somebody took day trade or two days trade, or few days trade, they could exit the long trade right at the point gold reverse from memory resistance. And if somebody was using real time chart, once again, they could use the daily chart resistance line, that price level to enter a day trade in the short direction and that would turn out to be very profitable. Right now it is becoming difficult for me to guess where gold will go. It is inside a triangle pattern that is very narrow, meaning it is very near the edge of the triangle. And if you have studied technical analysis, the more close it goes to the tip of the triangle, the more difficult it becomes to predict whether it will go up or down from here. So until it breaks out of the triangle, I am not able to take any trade in gold right now. Let's look at the daily chart and let us see how the memory resistance could be used to take a short day trade on Thursday. To get ready for the possible short trade, what we do is we draw a line at the memory resistance line 
on the daily chart. Once we know the resistance price level, we can change the template to fine tune template. Let me change the interval to 10 minutes. Now we are looking at GLD using fine tune 10 minute chart. Here is the resistance line that was on the daily chart memory resistance at 21.85 on thursday we see that price opened and then created this early range high and early range low it afterwards shoot up precisely to the memory resistance line we knew that the memory resistance was there so we were not going to try any long trade at the end of this candle this sharply bullish candle others who were chasing gold looking at this strongly bullish candle might be tempted to take long trade some of them might have taken long trade but we would not do that instead we'll be looking for a short trade and on this yellow candle we had a bear release signal we already had very high activity on the way up and on the way down on the way up immediately after that on the way down so we had exhaustion we had very strong resistance from daily chart from the memory resistance line so one could take a short trade at the end of this yellow candle stop loss will be just above days high so the risk distance will be this much and once price came to this level more than the risk distance was covered so the trade could be exited with profit what if i change the timeline to five minutes now we are looking at same gld using fine tune chart but using five minute interval this is market open then early range high early range low lines were formed we see that it broke strongly above early range high went above previous days high and came to the daily memory resistance line so if we were using five minute chart we'll be able to take the short trade on this yellow candle when the bear release signal came our short entry point will be here stop loss will be just above days high risk distance will be this much and when price came to last day's close we can see much more than risk distance was covered so we could book profit in the short day trade what i wanted to illustrate that we can use fine tune chart using both 10 minute and 5 minute intervals as you can see from this illustration if we use 5 minute interval you will be able to catch the trade a little bit early and that is my preferred interval especially if the entry is happening in the early morning session if the entry is happening after midday in the afternoon session after 12 after 1 pm around that time then i may change the interval to 10 minute interval to give it a little bit more time before i get the confirmation but if i am getting a signal in the morning session my preferred interval for entering day trades is the five minute interval it's the same for precisely entering swing trades. From the gold chart, we saw once again that using daily memory resistance line, we could precisely enter day trades on the fine tuned real time chart. Before looking at the broad market ETFs, let's look at the broad market internals. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side and NYSE composite index on the right hand side, both using weekly charts. 
when we look at the weekly index chart nasdaq and nyse both are very clearly bullish in nasdaq we have bullish candle color for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 for 10 successive weeks that's a long period of time Whereas in NYSE, we see that weekly candle color has changed to neutral for two weeks now. So obviously, NYSE is weaker than NASDAQ. Just a few weeks ago, NASDAQ was weaker. Now, NASDAQ is stronger. We keep on seeing this happening between NASDAQ, between SPY and also between DIA. Both are strongly bullish though from the index chart. In terms of internals, we see many internals decline. Five of the six internals declined this week. And three of them actually ended negative. So in summary, we can say that the indices are bullish, no doubt about that. They continue to be weak, not able to surpass previous peaks. And for this particular way, the internals are bearish, slightly bearish, but bearish. The bullishness of the indices are reflected in the broad market ETFs as well. Let's look at them. SPY made a new all-time high it is very clearly bullish in the weekly chart in the daily chart we see that there was a bearish headwind some time ago then there was a second bearish headwind price is still near the same location it is going up but very gradually going up and it is not pulling back enough to give us a low risk long entry opportunity at the right edge also we have a cyan color candle in daily chart but it is too close to upper boundary so we are not going to take any q standard trade in the long direction interestingly on thursday price tried to go down and in fact, it precisely went up from memory support line. If we change to the clean chart template, you can see more clearly, it didn't touch the memory support line, but came very close to it. And then went up from there with a very bullish shape candle. So somebody could probably take a long day trade using the reversal from near memory support line using fine tune chart. For swing trade, there is no signal at the right edge. It is already overbought. We are looking at QQQ using at a glance template, just like in case of SPY, QQQ also tried to go down on Thursday, but ended with a bullish shape candle. And next day on Friday, it went up sharply. From weekly chart, we see clearly it made a new all time high. And from the relative performance line in weekly, we see that in recent weeks, it is outperforming SPY. At the right edge in daily chart, we have a cyan color candle, just like in case of SPY. However, it is already above upper boundary and it is overbought. So we are not going to try any long trade at this point. And obviously it is in strong uptrend, so we are not going to try any short trade either. Now we are looking at DIA also made a new all-time high weekly chart is overbought daily chart is also overbought 
dia is also above upper boundary so we are not going to try any long trade there is no short trade signal as well for several weeks now we are seeing weakness in iwm in fact we started tracking the weakness just at this point when the daily candles turned yellow while spy qqq daily candles were still bullish since then iwm has continued to be weaker we can see the relative performance is steadily going down it has a memory resistance line so it has lower highs last week we saw it had lower lows this week we see it has equal lows so we can say looking from the right side it is now moving sideways there is no long trade signal and there is no short trade signal as well so we can see from all the four etfs they are either very bullish or moving sideways in case of iwm and none of them is giving a valid trade entry low risk trade entry and this is being reflected in the underlying stocks as well it is becoming difficult to find low risk trade opportunities last week we had some opportunities but not many let's look at the sector industry analysis and see how the strength of the indices and etfs are reflected in the sectors and industries every week we look at the sector performance of 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week yellow bar performance of one week prior to red bar blue bar performance of two weeks prior to yellow bar together they constitute performance of four weeks or about one month any bar coming to the right of zero line indicates that the sector gained and a bar coming to the left of zero line indicates that the sector declined this week the indices are strongly bullish etfs are bullish however from sectors we see five of the 11 sectors gained and six declined so in terms of sector breadth it is negative more declined than gained which is what happened in previous week as well however this week is more balanced than previous week other than telecom the rest of the industries didn't decline by a bigger percentage whereas the ascending sectors went up by reasonably large percentages which is different from what happened in the previous week that's why i mentioned that though the overall breadth is still negative more sectors declined than went up but it is more balanced than previous week information technology was the best performing sector in previous week and it continues to be the strongest sector fueled by earnings of some very large stocks last week's gain was probably largely the result of amazon leaping upward and this week apple contributed to the up move of the technology sector apple went up strongly after earnings telecom continues a decline several stocks in this sector are optimally valued but when i drill down from sector to industry to the well known stocks i didn't see any valid buy signal so we may continue to observe the sector as you know using qa the moment it starts to go up we are able to catch that and then we will look for a valid buy opportunity on the technical charts q charts by doing that 
we will be able to catch the very bottom of fundamentally strong stocks optimally valued in this case but such opportunity has not come yet energy has a big gain this week a sizable percentage gain if you were looking at qh sector analyst and drill down to the industries you could probably identify this up move well before other traders and could take some profitable trades in stocks in this sector this is probably the only sector where we could get some low risk long opportunities relatively easily the other sector or industries stocks were not giving any easy long trade energy was more lucrative in that way we are looking at the industries with best performance over last 5 days the best performers include three oil sector industries oil and gas exploration and production oil and gas drilling and oil and gas refining and marketing in oil and gas exploration and production we see that it just recently started to turn around it was underperforming for long time and this week was a strong week for this industry if we look at top 10 stocks in this industry they gained by between about 10 to 20% in a single week these are very significant gains and you could probably catch some of them early crzo went up by about 20% it had given a go with flow long signal on the daily chart weekly didn't give the signal however we will have a look at the chart and we will see that when it gave the daily cyan flow candle it was supported by yellow direction in the daily chart and i mentioned earlier that those may be valid entry points there are traders who continue to look at price of strong stocks coming down to major support and going up from there yellow direction line is one such major support on q charts and this stock crzo came to the yellow direction line and went up from there giving a cyan flow color candle so one could take a long it went up strongly the fact that the industry was also going up would give one confidence to take the long trade another stock in same industry dnr went up by more than 50% after displaying a bullish headwind signal in daily chart on 26th october both of this happened this way let us look at this industry from qh drill down to the stocks and then look at their q charts qh drill down is actually officially released now every time we open qh it analyzes 11 sectors and about 170 industries the analysis is done across 12 monthly periods and more frequently for recent periods over 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day for each review period qh assigns rank 1 to the best performer a large number to the worst performer and then applies a heat map cyan to the best performer magenta to the worst performer and a color gradient to all the sectors or industries in between the result is a heat map and ranking table that instantly tells us by looking at this primary 5 days period which sector or industry is strong we can identify that from the cyan color instantly like we can see information technology sector is number 1 very strong second is energy sector we can also identify which sector or industry was weak earlier like energy earlier it was magenta and now turning cyan so these are of higher interest to us because they may give not only possible swing long entries 
but also possible long-term investment by opportunities. We can click the investigate button that will populate the sector industry analysis tabs. And on the sector analysis tab, we can drill down further by clicking this components button, which will retrieve only the energy sector industries in the industry analysis tab. Our primary interval for deciding swing or long-term investment entry is the five days period. We can sort it by that. And instantly we see that some energy related industries like oil and gas storage and transportation. It was weak earlier, magenta, and is continuing to be weak now. So we are not going to try a long trade in it right now. Whereas other industries in energy sector like oil and gas exploration and production. It was weak earlier, magenta, but turning cyan now. In fact, it is the best performing industry this week. It was starting to get stronger for a few months now. So we were already observing it. And during the week, we could drill down and keep an eye on the stocks. If we drill down, it goes to Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith retrieves the stocks. It's retrieving 51 stocks found. We can click the calculator button to get more detailed data on all these 51 stocks. It's retrieving the data and then calculate the vital statistics and many other calculations. We can click the investigate button again to get the data in the vital analysis tab. And let me go to the performance panel. Our primary interest period is five days period. I am sorting on the five days period from biggest gainer to smallest gainer. And we can see the biggest gainers went up by very large percentages from somewhere between about 10% to about 20%. These are significant gains. And by watching at the industry strength, by watching at the stocks using QSonar and QCharts, we could catch some of the stocks at optimal price, low risk entry points. So we can see CRZO is one of them and DNR, the top two, CRZO and DNR. Let's look at their Q charts. We can see that in the weekly chart, initially CRZO was dropping, then it displayed a bullish headwind signal and started to go up, moved sideways for a while, declined slightly, couldn't go much below the low of the strongly bullish candle and went up strongly in this week. While that was happening in the weekly chart, in the daily chart, it went to the upper boundary, came down, still gave a higher low, gave a bullish shape candle on this yellow candle. Price was still below the yellow direction line and next day it gave a bullish flow candle, cyan color candle and it closed above the yellow direction line. So at this point, price was going up from below of three direction lines together, cyan, magenta, yellow. Doesn't happen often. Our requirement for go with flow long trade is for price to be above cyan and magenta direction lines. In this case, we had additional support from yellow direction line. That's what I mentioned sometimes traders look for a stock to come to major support and bounce up from there. This candle was last Friday's candle, this sand candle. So the weekly candle color at that time was still yellow, though the shape was strongly bullish because that weekly candle color was yellow. I mentioned that it didn't meet all the 
unambiguous checklist conditions. That is the weekly condition was not met. If you are using Q systems for a while, looking at the bullish shape of the weekly candle, the fact that price was going up from yellow direction line and that the industry was going up from a low point. You could take a long trade on this cyan color candle with stop just below recent low. This would be the entry price. This would be the risk distance. Our initial profit target would be upper boundary. That was hit in one to three trading days. So partial position will be booked. As the weekly candle ended pretty bullish and the daily is also very bullish, there is no reason to exit the full position. Partial position can still be held. Using protection signal as stop loss to make sure that the trade is risk free from now onward. Nice opportunity that one could catch went up by almost 20%. The other stock in the same industry that went up significantly is DNR. And we can see that it went up after displaying a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart. A bullish headwind signal had come in the weekly also. And after that price is gradually going up. Not sure if there was a valid bullish headwind setup on this day. But if somebody was watching the strength in the industry, the bullish headwind signal and the stock going up, someone could take a very low risk rate. If I was watching it, I will not take the long on this yellow candle because it was a doji like candle opening closing at the same point. But looking at the headwind signal, I will be cautious and Next day on this candle using early range breakout technique, I will be taking the long trade. That would turn out to be a profitable trade as well. At minimum, looking at the bullish headwind signal, if somebody was holding any short position, they will be cautious. Make sure that stop loss or protect profit stop is there to protect any remaining position in the short direction. We are always careful about the bullish headwind signal or bearish headwind signal. If we have a trade in the opposite direction, we like to put our stop order in place. In another oil and gas industry, oil and gas drilling, this was also very weak, only recently started to turn around and this stock PES.N went up by more than 30% and this time it gave a very clearly valid Q headwind long signal that came on 25th October and PES was optimally valued. So we could easily take this trade using either top down approach or bottom up approach because it was a valid Headwind long signal, it would come on sonar as well. Let's look at this industry, oil and gas drilling, and then look at the stock's fundamentals, PES.N's fundamental, and lastly look at its chart. Oil and gas drilling, this industry, we can see again, this is one that was weak for many months, started to gain strength. For this week, it has a rank of four, very strong. So we could keep an eye on the stocks. We could drill down to the constituents, retrieving the data. And PES.N is one of them. We click the calculator to get the vital statistics. And we can see even now PES.N is optimally valued. We know that by looking at the blue color on the relative value score column. Let's look at PES on Q technical charts. 
we see that PES gave a bullish headwind signal on this candle, yellow candle. It was a bullish shaped candle. And from the weekly chart, we see that it had bullish shaped candle for third week now. So when this bullish headwind came, the weekly candle shape was bullish. Color was magenta, but that is fine. The unambiguous checklist conditions for bullish headwind trade doesn't require a yellow or a green weekly candle color. It is fine if the weekly candle shape is bullish. The more you look at the unambiguous checklists and the Q indicators, you will see that they are crafted very carefully to take trades when the signals are there, but to avoid trades when it is risky. All the checklists are made after a lot of consideration. And that is why we could take the bullish headwind trade on this candle and get a very large profit. I can see that earnings was nearby. So one would probably not take a stock long position one could take the bullish trade using short put vertical. That would be a low risk trade and that will make significant profit because of the delta gain as the stock went up and also because of the volatility crash. At the right edge, it is very close to memory resistance. So we will not like to take any long trade at the right edge but the optimal entry point was on this bullish headwind candle. There is another industry, food retail, that is one of the best performers. And this is again another industry which was weak for a long time and just recently started to turn around. So all these three, oil and gas exploration production, oil and gas drilling, as well as food retail. The industries were weak for a long time and starting to turn up. Those are the times we love to take long trades because they are very low risk trades. In food retail industry, SFM went up by more than 13% after giving a valid box long trade setup on 30th October. It met all the checklist conditions so it could be identified either using bottom-up approach or top-down approach using QSonar. Let's look at the industry from QA and then we will look at its technical charts. In the QA for industry analysis, we can refresh the data by clicking the investigate button, magnifying glass, search for food retail. And instantly from the heat map, we see that it was weak for many months, magenta color, and now starting to turn cyan stronger. Over our primary interval for trade entry, five days period, rank is two, the second best possible rank. So we could drill down and we will get SFM as one of the stocks. SFM can click the calculator button to get the vital statistics. And we can see that it is not optimally valued, not blue color, but not overvalued also, not magenta. It has a short squeeze potential. It has already gone up significantly. If we click the investigate button, go to vital analysis, and over five days, we can see SFM has gone up by more than 13%. That is gain in this week. That's significant gain. Let's look at its technical charts to see how we could take the long entry. SFM tried to go below the watermark support level in the daily chart and then came back from a low point creating a very bullish shape candle. However, the candle color was still red and there was no bull release signal. 
also the close was still below the watermark support so it tried to go below watermark support reverse closed just below the watermark support in this yellow candle it closed above the watermark support so it created a false downside reversal that was accompanied by the bull release signal and we had heavy activity indicating possible exertion first on the down day and then again heavy activity on the up day weekly candle color was already yellow for several weeks so on this yellow candle we had a valid box long trade setup i can see earnings was nearby this is earnings session many stocks are having earnings so one might not take the long trade using stocks but a short put vertical might be appropriate very low risk instrument to take bullish trades just before earnings if we have a valid long trade setup that trade will be extremely profitable again the stock went up so we will benefit from delta gain as well as from volatility crash again a trade that could be identified using top down approach using qh or using q sonar that is the bottom of that trade nice setups isn't it which were also aligned with the industry strength so pes.n and sfm dot o gave valid q trade setups why the industries were gaining strength those are easy trades to take with more confidence we are now looking at industries with worst performance last 5 days this is earning session this stock ua under armor dropped by more than 26% this week another stock in the same industry apparel accessories and luxury goods industry icon dropped by more than 67% both were bearish for long time along with the industry the industry is also now bearish for long time though both ua and icon dropped significantly they are not near any visible support so their valuation may be optimal but we are not going to try any long entry the worst performing industries have been languishing at the bottom for many months in fact all the worst performing industries are languishing for long time so it seems the stocks that are doing well continues to do well the stocks that were underperforming a few weeks ago i saw they started to try to go up but this week we see that they fell down again they are not able to sustain their attempt of going up we can see that immediately from qh and by observing that we can make our trading decisions more confidently which industry stocks to try to go long which ones to stay away from Let's look at QH and the worst performing industries. Can go to industry analysis, refresh the data, sort over our primary period five days, largest number to smallest number. So we have this worst performing industries, and we can see the top ten or the worst ten. You can say they are all magenta for long term. apparel accessory luxury goods is one it which tried to go up for a while but then again fail that's why i mentioned the industries that are weak are weak now for long time you can see the top 15 are actually weak for very long time however we have this tool now so the moment they start to go up on this five day primary period we will be able to catch the stocks bottom again with very low risk entry so if we get stopped out fine but we will be able to enter the stocks just when the industry is starting its attempt to go up we will do that on fundamentally strong stocks that to when there is a low risk 
technical buy point on QCharts. The worst performer, houseware and specialties. It dropped by more than 20%. And this industry's drop was largely due to new wells, NWLs, 23% drop after earnings. For many of these languishing industry stocks, and for NWL also, we have optimal valuation. However, there is no visible support on Q charts. So again, a stock that we may keep an eye on, but we'll not buy it until we have valid Q trade signal on the technical charts. Every week we also study the industries with biggest rank gain and biggest rank drop because they tend to show us which industries will outperform or underperform in subsequent weeks. We are looking at industries with biggest rank gain this week. Drug retail industry was underperforming for many months. It has the fastest pace of going up this week. Two stocks, CVS and WBA. Both are optimally valued. Both have reliable earnings. Both have displayed bullish headwind signal in daily charts. However, one of them looks more attractive, that is CVS, because CVS is near support in both weekly and daily, and it may give a long entry signal next week. WBA doesn't have an immediate long trade signal potential. Let's look at the industry in QH, drill down to the stocks and look at the two charts as well. So you are able to see a very systematic way of finding truly highest probability trades where we have sector industry strength weakness, fundamental as well as technical strength weakness in favor of our trade. We filter QH industry analysis on drug retail. We can instantly see that it was weak for many months. And this week it has a very big rank gain, which is showing up as number one in the pace column, 10 days to five days. So we could drill down by clicking the get components button, it's retrieving the data. It has found three stocks. Click on the calculator button to calculate the vital statistics. It's retrieving the detailed stock data now. Finished updating. We can instantly see that both CVS and WBA are very attractive. They have optimal valuation both for relative and internal value and both have strong earnings quality. The third stock is not as good as the other two because its earnings quality is not good. It is weak, magenta, and also internal value score is not good. No data is there. If we click on the magnifying glass to do further analysis for the growth, we will see that they have good growth as well. You can go to the vital statistics, move to the growth panel. We can see for EPS, CVS and WBA both have very reasonable growth, 10% or above, between one year to five year period. And revenue growth is also positive. CVS actually has better revenue growth over one year period and also better EPS growth. Though both are having decent growth for EPS and revenue. So these are interesting stocks. The industry is starting to go up in terms of pace. The rank over five days period is also cyan now. Pace is very strong and rank over five days period is also cyan. So this is bullish now, allows us to take a swing long or long-term investment by position. Let's look at WBA first. WBA had earnings on this candle, or maybe on this candle. Then it went below the watermark support level. On this candle, we have a bullish headwind signal. 
However, there is no valid thread setup right now. Let me change to open template. We can see the bullish headwind came when price was at lower boundary. That's a good position to take a long trade. However, it didn't meet all the conditions of the bullish headwind trade because the weekly candle was still magenta color and very bearish shape. So we would not be taking any bullish headwind long trade. But we may keep an eye on this stock. The industry is starting to go up. It has a bullish headwind signal. It is optimally valued, has nice growth. So it will be nice if the stock now comes back to this watermark support and goes up from there. That will give us a very low risk, probably a valid box long trade setup. So this was one of the stocks in drug retail industry. The other one was CVS, which is looking better in technical charts. CVS also dropped significantly in this period and then displayed a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart. The candle was indecisive and the weekly at that time was also bearish in color shape was not bullish yet so we were not going to take any long trade next week if it starts to go up one may take a long trade very low risk long trade which stop just below recent low entry may be around this point and initial profit target could be as soon as the risk distance is covered why i advise to take profit quickly in such cases is because there is no valid Q trade setup. Though the bullish headwind signal is there, the weekly is not confirming the trade yet. So if at all one takes a trade, it is advisable to book at least partial profit quickly. And that could be done once the risk distance is covered. Between the two charts, CVS looks slightly better to me. CVS looks better than WBA. Another industry that went up in rank is gold. However, when we drill down, we see all the stocks in this are already overvalued. So I'm not very willing to take a long trade in the gold mining stocks. Let's quickly drill down from gold industry to gold stocks. This will illustrate how easily we can make trading decisions and enter only the ones which are having highest probability of success. Gold industry, we see that it is spotty in terms of ranking. Magenta, then trying to be cyan, magenta and cyan again. Not a very nice pattern in terms of ranks. It has very good pace this week. So that caught my interest and I drill down is retrieving the stocks, clicking the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation. It's retrieving the data, Let's fetch the data, and immediately we can see from the magenta color, both in terms of relative valuation and internal valuation. None of them are having good valuation. They're already overvalued, whatever price they are in. So I'm not very keen to take long term. And remember the gold chart we discussed, it is inside a triangle near the peak of the triangle. That's a time where the direction of gold as a commodity is also not clear. That's another reason we are not going to take any long trade in gold miners right now. On the other hand, airlines, another industry that gained after languishing for a while. This is one interesting industry. It was underperforming for a while, and I found this stock, JetBlue. It has a very nice balance between valuation and growth, and it has actually given a box long trade setup on Friday. So you could identify using Sonar, or you could identify using top down approach, drilling down in QH. Let's look at QH and then drill down to the airlines industry stocks and then also look at JetBlue's technical charts. In industry analysis, 
we can filter by airlines and we can instantly see again that it was weak for a long time over five days it is still magenta in between magenta and cyan you can say probably more magenta than cyan over two days it improved rank a bit over one day it improved rank a lot more but more interesting is the pace column 10 days to 5 days it went up very fast from a low level pace rank is only 9 that caught my attention i am always looking for colors of interest either over 5 days it is cyan or the pace 10 days to 5 days cyan and of more interest is when it was magenta before turning cyan so we could drill down to the airline stocks it has found number of stocks calculate its vital statistics and jet blue we can see it is optimally valued in terms of derivative valuation and in terms of growth it has nice growth relative to its peers probably the second best stock in terms of growth after ha ha may be hawaiian airlines but jetblue has the second best growth in terms of earnings earnings tend to be more important than revenue so jetblue is interesting stock and let's look at its technicals very nice chart isn't it in the weekly it fell down went below the watermark support level reversed strongly on this cyan color candle with a bull release signal there was a bull release signal earlier on this yellow candle however the candle shape was not bullish so we were not thinking of taking any long trade at that time but this cyan color candle was strongly bullish with a bull release signal after that tried to come down precisely reversed from the memory support line again and we can see in the daily chart after earnings it dropped came to the watermark support that was in the weekly chart then went up from there on friday it has gone above this watermark support level so it created a false downside breakout exhaustion was there already at the same price level we have a bull release signal and we have a bullish shape as well as neutral color weekly candle that meets all the conditions of box long trade setup it has very low risk stock will be just below recent low partial profit could be booked at the value area that will also give us reasonable reward risk ratio remember headwind trade bounce trade box trades these are reversal trades so we are trying to book profit quickly trend is not our friend in these cases so we try to book profit at value area or once the risk distance is covered in this case both are coming to about the same price level so this is one stock where one could take a long trade at friday's close if somebody wants to take on monday they could use the real time fine tune chart to take it if on monday price already opens very high maybe near the yellow direction line then the reward risk will not be attractive so we will not take the long anymore this is also one reason i prefer to take the trade just before market close that gives me attractive reward risk ratio there is no uncertainty about it and i don't have to spend time waiting for a early range breakout that is my personal preference how about those who are having full time job maybe coming out of office and then doing the analysis identifying this trade they can use different ways to enter the trade next day if they can track it on fine tune chart they can enter the trade when it goes above early range high or they can place a trade if the stock goes above last day's high 
that is also a valid approach for people who are in the office during market hours and are not able to open the charts at all. Yes, I see a comment on JetBlue, yes. The holiday season is coming in US and also the tax cuts, the draft, first draft of tax cut is already announced. We don't know for sure it will be passed or not, but the tax cuts seem to be there. That may help some stuff. That is again a hypothesis. I am also tracking that. Finally, we take a trade only if the objective analysis tells us to take a trade. Because sometimes the hypothesis doesn't work out. But we keep an eye on the major events and the new tax plan in the USA market is certainly a major event. So JetBlue could be identified from the drill down quite easily. Very nice stock in my view. The worst ranked decliners of this week, they are spread across diverse industries. And I tried to drill down in many of them, didn't find any obvious and easy short opportunity. You may try to find, however, looking at the broad market, continuing to go up, especially the stocks that were strong are remaining strong. The ones that were languishing are still languishing. We saw that already from QH. The worst performing 10 industries or even 15 industries are weak for a long time. They are not giving any good long opportunities, but they are languishing for so long that the optimal time to take short in them has passed long ago. So I don't see any good short opportunity or long opportunity from this list. Home building is one interesting industry. It may be affected by the new tax plan because the deduction allowed on home loan is going to be reduced from current $1 million to about $500,000. Some home builders came out against this tax plan. So I actually drilled down to the home building industry stocks, but didn't find any good looking shots also. And I'm not going to take any long because of this major announcement on tax plan that may affect home builders negatively. So I'm not going to take any long trade in them right now. So I was looking for potential shots, but didn't find any. That's why I mentioned that overall, there are some long opportunities. Energy industry and energy sector is certainly one of them. We saw JetBlue as one that gave us a valid signal. CVS as a drug retailer could give us a low risk entry opportunity. Not a standard trade setup, but still a low risk entry opportunity possible next week. But there is no good short setup. However, some good shots were there earlier in the auto industry. And I had taken a trade in General Motors that turned out to be very profitably. Yes, yes. There is a comment on Toll Brothers. Why Toll Brothers more than other home builders? One hypothesis, again, these are all hypotheses because Toll Brothers houses tend to be higher price than KB home or Pulte home. Tax plan affects houses which are more than $500,000 in price. Toll Brothers might have reacted more sharply. Just look at the chart and you will see there is no good short opportunity at this point. It was at very top in the weekly chart. It reversed sharply in the weekly chart. However, it is right on top of the memory support. That's why I am not going to short it right now. Isn't it interesting? It had a very sharp drop on Thursday, but the drop precisely stopped at the memory support line. So if somebody was watching the news, it's a major news, and then was tracking the stock on fine-tuned real-time charts. Let's have a look at that. Let's change it to fine-tuned template. To fit in the data, let's change the interval to 10 minutes. See, this is Thursday. 
market open blue line then early range high was formed early range low was formed precisely at the close of this red candle we had a early range breakout short trade in a stock that was being adversely affected by the tax plan so we could take a shot right at this point put stop just above days high this would be our risk and immediately it dropped sharply it hit the yellow line then continued to stay at that level so by this drop we had much more than risk distance cover so this was a very easy and profitable short day trade but it stopped precisely at the daily memory line so we are not going to take any short swing trade i looked at multiple other home builders doesn't seem to be any nice chart to take a short trade what would be nice as trader if we see toll brothers go up little bit and then drop again giving us probably a valid go with flow short trade setup with low risk entry right now there is no such entry overall i see that few long opportunities are there not many energy is one sector again that i mentioned airlines may be one also affected by tax plan not many long and hardly any short so we may continue to watch the market to have better signals sooner or later it will come that is all that i plan to share in today's session thanks a lot for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably or stay away safely from the market thanks again have a great weekend